Today, the Tacoma gets a cab. Welcome back everyone. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe. I am extremely excited about today's video. Since purchasing my Tacoma, I have been looking at either doing a overland bed rack. I've been looking at campers of all different styles and designs. And it just so happened that around the time that I bought my truck, RSI Smart Cap announced that they will be coming out with this RSI Smart Cap Evo for the 16 plus Tacoma. And as soon as I saw those teaser shots, I knew I had to have it. Now, the reason I decided to go with the RSI Smart Cap over a Overland bed rack, one of the things I really loved about having my factory bed cover on here was the fact that all my stuff would always stay dry and relatively clean. And I knew with having a Overland bed rack, if I'm going overlanding or if I'm just going on long road trips, all my stuff in the bed will get either wet, dirty, or just destroyed. So that was the main reason I didn't go with the Overland bed rack. One thing to note, even with the OEM bed cover, it did leak a little bit. So, you know, if we went really hard on trails, you know, in the desert or, you know, on the sand dunes, it would get, you know, dirt and sand into the bed. And also with some pretty big rainstorms, it would leak as well. So while I'm not expecting this to be 100% weatherproof, our side does advertise it to be 100% weatherproof. So we'll see how it stands up to the elements, especially as we are coming up into fall and winter here in Utah. We're definitely gonna put this through its paces. And honestly, one of the main reasons that I got this cap was it just looks badass. In my opinion, at least, I just feel like with the direction that I'm going with my Tacoma, it just fits it very well. And I just couldn't be happier with it. Now this video is gonna be fairly long. I am going to be running through the installation of this. So I'll make sure to put timestamps in the description below. That way you guys can jump around instead of having to watch the entire video if you don't want to. I do appreciate all the feedback I have received from everyone over my past few videos. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the video, Drop a comment below and let me know what you think about the RSI Smart Cap compared to like a Overland bed rack or maybe like a Lear or ARE or something else that might be color matched. Now, if you are considering getting your own RSI Smart Cap for your Tacoma and you are using this video to try and help you make that decision, I will drop you a link below to where I got mine. Okay, let's go over the features of the RSI Smart Cap. Unlike other caps, the RSI Smart Cap is actually made out of forged stainless steel rather than fiberglass. And it's also the first cap that has a modular design. What that means is that this actually comes shipped to you in five pieces and you essentially just assemble it at your house. This makes it really nice. Unlike other caps where you have to go to a dealer to get it installed, you can do this at your house. Also due to the forged stainless steel construction, this has a payload of 775 pounds up top. This is static when you're just hanging out or 330 pounds dynamic when you are cruising around on the freeway and whatnot. With the RSI Smart Cap Evo, you also get three Goldvik style windows. These open up all the way to where they actually give you about 17% more access than a conventional or regular fiberglass shell. What's really intriguing about the RSI Smart Cap is that it comes with a lot of accessories to where you can either put a kitchen in here, a table, it does have a roof rail system to where you can put a rack on here, a tent, kayaks, bikes, whatever you might want to do. So there's a lot of accessories for this cap, which I will be exploring and playing with. Also due to the design of the RSI Smart Cap, they advertise it to be completely weatherproof, whether it's freezing, rain, snow, whatever we throw at it, we should be able to not get any leakage. But again, we are going to be testing that. Also on the side panels, we do have these little windows that will actually slide open. So if you do have your dogs in the back, which I don't, it's a good option to open it. Or if you are sleeping in the back, it's a good way to get some air in there. Now this cap also utilizes the factory Toyota rails on the inside of the bed. And you only use three bolts on each side to attach it. That makes it very easy to take on and off. 
probably within you know 10 15 minutes you can have this off and you know if you do need to have a taller payload very easy to remove as i mentioned one of the big reasons i got this is to keep you know my cargo dry clean keep all the dirt and debris out and one of the features of the rsi smart cap which will help with this is that it has a positive pressure air vent which will actually filter fresh air into the cap at a greater velocity than a regular fiberglass cap would. This essentially will keep debris, sand, dirt out at a much higher rate than a normal cap. And again, I just love the way it looks. Now, I understand that it might not be everyone's cup of tea. You know, some guys and gals might want to actually go through and get this paint mashed. I really love the look of it. And that was my very quick overview of the RSI Smart Cap. Again, we'll hop into the install. It took me about two hours. I tried to do this by myself. It didn't work. You will need to have a set of helping hands so I had a buddy come and help me out. Especially lifting this onto the bed, you will need at least two people. RSI does recommend having four people to lift this up. Now, since the RSI Smart Cap came with these two large boxes, I've moved my truck out of the garage to give me a little bit more room to do this install and to just assemble the cap. And this way I'll also be able to properly record the install. Once I assemble the cap, we'll move the truck back in and then I'll have a buddy come down and help me install it onto the truck. Also, with these boxes being oversized, these were actually delivered using a LTL freight company. So keep that in mind when ordering this cap to ensure you are home to either help offload or to receive the package. Also, always make sure the boxes are intact and not damaged before accepting freight shipments so that way you don't have any issues in the future. I'm just pointing this out because a lot of people think that this might get delivered using like UPS or FedEx ground. That's not the case. And it's actually what I thought as well until I got a call from the delivering company trying to schedule the delivery. Luckily I was at home, so it wasn't an issue. Now, according to the RSI instructions, in order to assemble the actual cap, we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, a wrench, and also a flat wrench, also a torque wrench, even though the torque specs are like seven or eight foot pounds of torque. So hopefully my large torque wrench will work. And then in order to install the cap onto the truck, we'll need a 13 millimeter socket along with a 13 millimeter wrench. Due to the large size of this cap and all the different panels, RSI recommends having two people to assemble the actual cap and four people to install into the truck. I'm going to attempt to assemble the cap here in the garage by myself using some chairs and whatnot to prop the sides up. And then I'll have a buddy come down to help me lift it up onto the bed before we attach it. I will first take the thinner box, which has a roof panel and I'll lay it flat on the floor with the label that reads top panel facing up. Next, let's open the box up. Um, I will not be removing the panel from the box and I will attach the side panels to this. This way the cap doesn't get scratched up during assembly. So let's open this up real quick. Oh. Okay, here we have the panel. Again, I am not going to be pulling this out. We're essentially going to install the side panels and the front and rear while it's sitting here flat. This way it's also not gonna get scratched up. So we have it on the cardboard box. Now, as we're going through the install, essentially the slanted panels will go towards the rear and this will be the rear. The way you can tell is by this air vent right here and that's towards the back. Next up, I'm gonna remove the panels and also the assembly hardware from this big box. And I'm gonna to try to record this as good as I can. I have a pretty small garage, so bear with me. This might be the hardware. Be smart, open me first. Let's do that. Fitment and assembly kit box. Just real quick to show you what's included in the install kit. Of course, your installation instructions. Even if you are following my video as a reference, I still recommend going through this. Um, just in case I miss any steps and I'll actually go through and make sure I'm not missing any steps as well. So we got that. We have a little bit of gasket kit here. So this is essentially if your bed's not even, you can even that out by throwing this other in the front or the rear. The D gasket rubber, this will go on the bottom side of the cap to prevent any leaks. The clips and hardware, this will actually be used to attach the cap to the actual truck. Kit one, kit two, I'm assuming this is to actually attach the panels to the roof and keys. Next up, let's open the rest of these boxes and start pulling the side panels out. 
I will say one thing. This is packaged up very, very nicely. First up, we have the right side panel. Get this guy out. <sighs> okay, I will immediately say this will be a lot, a lot easier with two people. So I might actually call my buddy to give me a hand because these side panels are pretty heavy. And I just don't know if I'll be able to do this on my own. So now we know that this is definitely a two-man job. Essentially, we're gonna install the side panels first and then the front and rear. As I mentioned before, where this vent is, this is the rear, so the slanted side goes towards the rear. We're first gonna put the right panel on, which goes in here. Also, we're going to use the hardware that's labeled Kit 1. Essentially, just going to use the M6 nylock nuts and also the washers. So, we're gonna finger tighten everything. This should stay up on its own, and then we'll do the front and rear. So let's just get it done real quick. So we're gonna flip it. And also, if it's not going in, holding it up vertically and then just tap it in with your hand to get it in. So next up, we're just gonna finger tighten this puppy on. Okay, now once we have the side panel in and just hand tighten, it should stand up straight. Next up, we'll do the other side. I'm not gonna record that, and I'll show you guys how to do the front and rear. Next up, we're gonna install the front and rear panels. As you guys can tell by the window here, this is the front panel, which is gonna go right here on the flat part. These will be getting installed using these little fastener blocks. What we need to do first is remove these blocks. As we pull them out, make sure to keep them nearby. As soon as we put this against the side panels, we'll reattach them. And to do so, you're gonna loosen the little nut on the rear and pull them out. And this is what they look like. You've got your little fastener block, little looks like a little washer, and then your little set screw. Okay, just to show you guys how these puppies go. So you have your little front your block with a nice RSI logo. So this will actually go in like so. As you guys can see, this washer is flat here. The flat part goes into the block. There's a nice recess here that's where this additional little washer goes, and then your set screw. Okay, next up, we're gonna move the front panel into place. Okay, now that we have this puppy in place and lined up, we're going to go through and attach these little blocks. Now, in the instructions, it actually tells you how to attach them. Essentially, it starts in the middle, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So make sure to look at the instructions on how to attach this properly. Um, if you start putting these in cattywampus, this is gonna be all out of whack and it'll be hard, harder on you. So we'll start doing that right now. And then as mentioned, we're gonna put the block in through the rear flange into the roof panel. And then push your set screw through. Okay, once you have this, go through and do the rest of these based on the assembly instructions. Once we do the front, we'll go through and do the rear, and then we'll go through and tighten everything down. Now that we have the front panel finger tight, we'll do the same on the rear. Once we have everything finger tight, we'll go through and tighten everything based on the torque specs. At that point, we'll be ready to throw our weather sail on the bottom of the cap, and we're ready to install. So. We'll go through and real quick install the back panel and we'll go from there. Now we've got all the nuts and bolts tightened down. One thing to keep in mind, make sure to follow the instructions for the torque specs on all the nuts and bolts. Also, if you, are, if you do not have a torque wrench, one thing that you can do as a good reference point is if the metal starts bowing in, that means you have it too tight and back it a little bit up. The reason for that is if the metal is bowing in, it will leak. So to make sure that you're not ruining the sealant, Make sure it's nice and straight. Next up, what we're gonna do is add this weather stripping to the bottom of the cap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on this corner right here, which is 
the bottom, the back left. We're gonna start right here, make sure we connect it, run it all the way around. We're gonna do it about one eighth of an inch from the edge. So we're not gonna do it flush, about an eighth, eighth, eighth of an inch. Go all the way around. One thing, as you're doing the corners, make sure you're not kinking the weather stripping, make sure it's nicely rounded. Also, in the instructions, RSI asked for some super glue to be able to super glue the, you know, the corners, the edges. Um, I don't have any super glue right now, so we'll see if that's gonna cause any issues. I don't think it will, but they're just saying for extra protection, just here where it connects to the rear weather stripping, just to do, do some super glue. So yeah, let's get this thing on here. And then after that, we'll be ready to install it onto the truck. And once we get to the end here, we're again, just gonna make sure this is nicely rounded out and it's not getting kinked up. And once we're at the end, we'll take a box cutter or a sharp knife and just cut this weather stripping. Okay. And this is where RSI recommends using super glue just on the edge right here. Okay. Now the weather stripping's on, we are ready to get this bad boy installed onto the truck. Okay, now that we have the RSI Smart Cap complete assembled, we have the weather stripping on it, we're ready to throw that puppy onto this. Again, RSI recommends that you use four people to do this. I'm gonna try and do it with my buddies, with the two of us, I think we'll be able to get it. The RSI Smart Cap is around 200 pounds, so I think we should be able to get it. My 19 Tacoma came with the OEM bed cover, so first I'm gonna pull that off. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. It takes like two minutes. All we have to do is remove the 12 millimeter bolt in the corner over there and then just roll it up. One thing to note, I'm gonna keep all the brackets for this cover on the truck, just in case I'm gonna put it back on for whatever reason. And then I'm not planning on selling this. So let's pull this off real quick. So all we need to do is remove this bolt right here. Make sure you keep this around, do not lose this. Um, this bolt right here, if you have to get it replaced from Toyota, is like $25, so make sure you hold on to it. Okay, once we have the bolt out, all we're gonna do is roll this puppy up. And on the final one, you have another click right here. There we have it. Now I'm just gonna go through and clean up these channels here and we'll be ready to throw the RSI Smart Cap on. I've got the factory bed cover off. We have these channels nicely cleaned up. Now we're ready to throw the RSI Smart Cap onto the truck. One thing that's very important as we're lifting this and also for you, make sure when you rest it on, do not slide it back and forth because you will ruin the weather stripping and the cover, the cover will leak. So what we want is lift it up if we need to adjust it lift it back up and recenter it. Once the smart cap is on the bed, we're going to use the OEM Toyota rail system with the supplied hardware to attach the cap to the truck. Should be very simple, so let's get it done. No, it's fine. Now that we have the cap in place, we're gonna use the attached hardware with the clamps and screws to secure the cap to the truck. Essentially, these clamps will go slide into the OEM Toyota rail system, and then we'll attach it with these set screws or bolts. Should be very simple, and looks like we're gonna be using three on each side. All we're gonna do here is pop this cap off on the rail system. Like that. You're gonna take the clamp, slide it in and the cap has three provisions here for the bolts so we'll just slide this all the way back here next up take your big bolt slide it through i'm just going to finger tighten these initially
And then RSI asks for these to be torqued down to nine foot pounds, so make sure to do that. Okay, once we have these tightened, I'll go ahead and do the other side, and then yeah, we'll be done with securing this. And there we have it. Thank you all for watching the video. I hope you guys did find this video informative. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, drop me a like, let me know in the comments what you think about the RSI Smart Cap Evo on my Tacoma. And I'll be doing a more in-depth full review once I've actually used this for a few months to see if we can find any issues with it. But so far, I'm loving it. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.